umpires, well, they're usually on point. Got him! No! He called safe! But let's be real, there are moments when you just want to shake your head. We've seen our fair share of umpire blunders. Some huge, some tiny, and some that stick with us like gum on a shoe. So, let's dive into the worst calls in MLB history. Armando Galarraga's near-perfect game. In the annals of baseball history, few moments have stirred as much debate and disappointment as Armando Galarraga's near-perfect game in 2010. The stage was set. Galarraga, donning the Detroit Tigers colors, danced through the innings, retiring batter after batter with the precision of a maestro conducting a symphony. With the game winding down and victory tantalizingly close, destiny took an unexpected turn. A ground ball, a quick throw, and a moment frozen in time as the umpire's call echoed across the stadium. Safe. Right side, Cabrera will cut it off. Galarraga covers. He's out. No, he's safe. He is safe. In an instant, what should have been a crowning achievement for Galarraga morphed into a symbol of heartbreak and injustice. Yet, amidst the chaos and disappointment, umpire Jim Joyce, grappling with the weight of his error, didn't shy away from accountability. Instead, he faced it head on, publicly acknowledging his mistake and extending a heartfelt apology to Galarraga. It was a rare display of humility in a world often defined by ego and obstinacy. However, Joyce's admission couldn't quell the storm of controversy that followed. The call echoed far beyond the ballpark, sparking heated debates about the necessity of instant replay and clutch moments and putting a damp on what could have been a historic achievement. Galarraga's almost perfect game shows how dope he is on the mound, but also reminds us that even in baseball, people mess up sometimes. Levon Hernandez's Strike Zone 1997, one of the worst strike zones ever. October 12th, 1997, and the Marlins are going head-to-head -head with the Braves in Game 5 of the National League Championship Series. Now, let me tell you, things are heating up real quick, but not in the way you'd expect. Home plate umpire Eric Gregg, yeah, he's not exactly making friends out there. Number seven. His strike zone, let's just say it's wider than the Grand Canyon, and it's all going down in favor of Marlins pitcher LeVon Hernandez. Now, we're not talking about your run-of-the-mill bad calls here. Nah, these pitches, they're practically in another zip code, miles off the plate. Braves third baseman Chipper Jones, man, he's seeing red. He watches a couple of pitches that are so far out, they may as well be in the parking lot. And what does he get? Umpire Greg telling him they're strikes. There's his 14th strikeout, tying. It's enough to make you chuckle in disbelief. And don't even get me started on Fred McGriff. He's facing a curveball that's practically in the next county. But guess what? It's called a strike, and that's the game. Levon Hernandez, bless his soul, racks up a whopping 15 strikeouts that day. And let me tell you, that ain't his usual gig. But hey, when the ump's calling him like that, might as well take advantage, right? The Marlins walk away with a 2-1 victory, sealing the deal, and moving on in the series. Before we proceed further, if you enjoyed our content, please take a moment to subscribe to our channel. We're on a quest to reach a thousand subscribers. Thanks. The Call, 1985 World Series, Game 6, Kansas City Royals versus St. Louis Cardinals. It's Game 6 of the 1985 World Series. Tension crackling in the air as the Kansas City Royals and the St. Louis Cardinals battle it out on the diamond. The stakes couldn't be higher, with the Royals on the verge of elimination after dropping the first two games at home. Finally, in the bottom of the ninth, with the Royals trailing 1-0, an umpire's call ignites controversy that reverberates through baseball history. This is the story of the infamous call, a moment that forever changed the course of the World Series and sparked heated debate among fans and players alike. The fateful ruling on Royals runner Jorge Orta's at-bat sets off a firestorm of controversy. With Orta's hit to first base, Denkinger calls him safe, a decision that would later be scrutinized under the unforgiving lens of television replays and photographs. The call extends the inning for the Royals, giving them a glimmer of hope in their quest to snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. But it's not just a game-changing call, it's a catalyst for chaos. Denkinger became the target of intense backlash, facing a barrage of hate mail and even death threats from enraged Cardinals fans. Despite the controversy swirling around him, the Royals capitalized on the extended inning, clawing their way to a comeback victory and forcing a decisive Game 7 that would ultimately clinch them the 1985 World Series. This call became one of the most infamous moments in World Series history, 
influencing discussions about the role of umpires in critical game situations. The home run? That wasn't. 1996 ALCS, Game 1, New York Yankees, and Baltimore Orioles. Now let us take you back to another more controversial moment in baseball history. The home run that wasn't during Game 1 of the 1996 ALCS between the Yankees and the Orioles. It's the bottom of the 8th inning and the Yankees are trailing 4-3 when Derek Jeter steps up to the plate and sends a fly ball soaring towards right field. But just as the ball approaches the wall, 12-year-old fan Jeffrey Meyer reaches over, interfering with Orioles right fielder Tony Tarasco's attempt to make the catch. Despite the clear interference, umpire Richie Garcia makes a fateful decision. He rules it a home run, tying the game at 4-4 and sending shockwaves through the stadium. The call sparked immediate controversy as replays unmistakably show Meyer's interference. Many argue that Jeter should have been called out due to fan interference, potentially altering the outcome of the game. Nevertheless, the Yankees capitalized on the controversial call, rallying to victory in extra innings and setting the stage for a contentious debate that would echo throughout the series. The Yankees ultimately win the ALCS in five games, advancing to the World Series and eventually clinching the championship. Years later, umpire Richie Garcia also acknowledged that he made an incorrect call, further fueling discussions about the impact of human error in officiating and adding another layer to the enduring legacy of the home run that wasn't. Pine Tar Game No umpire blunder list would be complete without the classic Pine Tar incident. Wait, umpire, Tim McClellan. And the Yankees have won the ball game. It was July 24, 1983, and it was a nail-biting showdown between the Royals and the Yankees. The tension is thick enough to cut with a knife as George Brett strides up to the plate in the top of the ninth inning, his team trailing by a single run. Then, in a moment of sheer brilliance, Brett connects with the ball, sending a go-ahead two-run homer sailing over the fence, setting the stadium ablaze with excitement. But wait! Yankees manager Billy Martin isn't buying it. He accuses Brett's bat of being drenched in too much pine tar, that sticky stuff players use for grip. Umpire Tim McClellan steps into the fray, and after a thorough inspection, he drops a bombshell. Brett's home run is nullified due to the pine tar violation, sparking pandemonium on the field. Brett, fueled by a mix of disbelief and fury, storms out of the dugout in a fiery display. And having to be forcibly Vehemently protesting the umpire's decision. However, amidst the chaos, the Royals seized the opportunity to lodge a formal protest, arguing that the pine tar rule wasn't meant to nullify home runs. Their plea doesn't fall on deaf ears. American League President Lee McPhail upholds the protest, paving the way for a historic rematch weeks later. Weeks after the chaos erupted on August 18, 1983, the game resumed from the very moment George Brett's thunderous home run was called into question. The Royals won, meaning the call didn't affect wins and losses, but it's a historic blown call that did prevent managers from ever again trying to get a home run reversed on account of Pine Tar. AJ Brzezinski Strikeout In the high-stakes showdown of Game 2 of the 2005 ALCS between the Chicago White Sox and the Los Angeles Angels on October 12, 2005, a controversial play unfolded, stirring up quite the buzz in baseball lore. Picture this, bottom of the ninth inning, tension thick enough to slice with a butter knife. The White Sox trailing 1-0 and catcher A.J. Przinski steps up to the plate. As the pitcher winds up, Przinski swings and whoosh, he misses the pitch from the Angels hurler Kelvin Escobar. But hold on a sec, the drama's just getting started. The catcher, Josh Paul, seemingly snags the ball, and the Angels start sauntering off the field, convinced they've got this game in the bag. But Przinski, quick on his feet and keen-eyed, dashes off to first base, swearing the ball took a dirt dive. Now here's where it gets sticky. Umpire Doug Edding steps into the chaos and makes the call. Przinski's safe at first. Replays are inconclusive, leaving fans and players alike scratching their heads over whether the ball genuinely kissed the ground. But guess what? The White Sox aren't complaining. They ride the controversial wave straight to victory, clinching not only the game, but eventually the 2005 ALCS title. And yep, you guessed it, the World Series crown. The play-in game. Now buckle up, folks, because we're diving headfirst into another most nail-biting moment in baseball history. The 2007 National League play-in game between the Rockies and the Padres. It's October 1, 2007, and tensions are running sky high as the Rockies and Padres duke it out to snag that coveted National League wildcard spot for the playoffs. 
The game's tied up at 6-6, and we're deep into the 13th inning with no end in sight. Then, like a bolt of lightning, Rockies' Jamie Carroll sends a shallow fly ball soaring into right field. Matt Holliday, perched on third base, sees his chance and makes a break for home plate, sliding headfirst into a hard-stopping dash for victory. But here's where the plot thickens. Padres catcher Michael Barrett swoops in for the tag, and the ball gets away as Matt Holliday slides headfirst at home. Umpire Tim McClelland holds his breath, then makes the call. Holiday's safe. The crowd erupts, but replays show it's a controversial call. Rockies have won 14 of their last 15 games. Matt Holiday's head first slide replay reveals he missed the plate, and catcher Michael Barrett grabs the ball, proceeding to tag him out. In the end, the Rockies emerge victorious, edging up the Padres 9 8 in 13 innings. Their hard fought win propelled them into the playoffs, where they went on to make a historic run all the way to the World Series. Ron Gant is pushed off of first base. Now it's the 1991 World Series, and the Atlanta Braves are going toe to toe with the Minnesota Twins in a nail biter of a game. Ron Gant, the Braves' main man, steps up to the plate and smacks a single, hustling his way to first base like a bat out of hell. But here's where it gets wild. Just her back, and let's just say it wasn't pretty. There were heated debates left and right about whether the call was fair or foul, adding fuel to the fire of this already intense matchup. But here's the real kicker. With no instant replay back in 91, there was no way to double check Koble's call and set things straight. So the controversy lingered like a bad smell, leaving many to argue that the ump's decision straight up changed the game's outcome. And wouldn't you know it, the Twins ended up clinching the series in seven games, sealing their victory in a showdown that'll go down in baseball history. Player interference in the 1975 World Series. During Game 3 of the 1975 World Series, things got heated as the Boston Red Sox faced off against the Cincinnati Reds. The game was neck and neck, heading into the 10th inning with tension mounting on both sides. The Reds' Cesar Geronimo kicked things off with a solid single, setting the stage for what would be a game-defining moment. Pinch hitter Ed Armbrister stepped up to the plate, attempting a bunt that bounced just in front of home plate, giving Red Sox catcher Carlton Fisk an opportunity to make a play. And make a play he did, swiftly getting Geronimo out at second base. But here's where things took a wild turn. Armbrister, in a desperate attempt to salvage the situation, collided with Fisk, causing an uproar and resulting in an errant throw that allowed the runners to advance on second and third base. The Reds weren't having it though. They immediately protested the call, arguing that Armbrister should have been called out and Geronimo sent back to first base. But despite their objections, the appeal was rejected, paving the way for Joe Morgan to drive Geronimo home and clinch the game 6-5. To this day, many Red Sox fans feel robbed of their shot at the World Series title that year, marking a bitter memory that would linger until their eventual triumph in the new millennium. Chuck Knobloch's tag. In Game 4 of the 1999 ALCS, it was showdown time between the Red Sox and the Yankees, reigniting their age-old rivalry. Things got heated in the ninth inning when Jose Valentin hit what seemed like a routine ground ball to Yankee second baseman Chuck Knobloch. Knobloch went for the tag on the runner, hustling the second, and then fired to first, sealing the deal with a game-ending double play. But here's the kicker. Knobloch straight up missed the tag by a good three feet, and the only one buying it was umpire Tim Sheeta. An inning-ending double play. Jimmy Williams comes the call was so bogus that Red Sox fans went ballistic, tossing garbage onto the field in pure protest. They still swear up and down that this call cost them the series, but let's keep it real here. Even if the call had gone the other way, putting Offerman on second with two outs and no more Garcia Parra up, the Sox were already trailing by a landslide, down 9-2. Face it, they would have needed a miracle, like back-to-back-to-back-to-back-to-back-to-back home runs to even stand a chance. So, while it was a major league blunder, the fallout wasn't as earth-shattering as some might think. That's a wrap for today, folks. What's your take on the absolute worst call in MLB history? Drop your thoughts in the comment section below. And hey, if you dug the video and want to catch more, don't forget to smash that like button and hit subscribe. That way, you'll stay in the know and never miss a beat when it comes to our future content. Thanks for tuning in.